Hey guys, welcome to Reboot, our Wednesday night student ministry during this time of quarantine. Welcome and glad to have you with us wherever you are. Obviously, we wish we could be here at church, but hey, that doesn't mean that God's not with us and we still can't learn and grow. So real quick, we've got Caleb actually waiting to talk to us on Zoom and going to tell us what's happening with him. But before we get there, why don't we go ahead and say a prayer together? Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and this time. We thank you for your love, for your grace, for all you do for us. We thank you for the opportunity to go through Joshua, the book of Joshua, and learn more about your power, your majesty, your holiness, and your love. And Lord, we just pray you bless this time we have together tonight. Help us grow, help us learn, and help us stay connected. Even though we're not together, help us stay connected in community. Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you. We pray this in your name. Amen. We got Caleb Lyles, one of our sophomores, coming on Zoom with us. Caleb goes to Creekside High School, where he plays basketball. So, Caleb, how are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Uh, how's uh, quarantine been for you? Uh, boring. <laughs> Nothing to do. <laughs> Everything's closed. Do you still love your family, or are you annoyed at your family by now? Um, they they can get annoying. But yeah, still love them. <laughs> which which one of your siblings is the most annoying? Uh, <laughs> Silence. Which one of your siblings is your favorite to be around? Like right now? Yeah, right now. Uh, like, who, are your, who are your favorite ones? Riley. Riley? Oh. Yeah. That's cute. What sure. about online school? How's that going? Uh, it's easy, really easy. I finish all my work in like two hours. <laughs> Star yeah. student right there. I, th I mean, I'm <laughs> passing. So what are you doing with the rest of your time? Uh, uh, <laughs> literally nothing. <laughs> Hanging out. Well, I'm, I'm glad that we now figured out that you're going to drive to the church and play basketball, Greg. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, staying with basketball a little bit, um, what are you, what are you, uh, how are you feeling for next year, your junior year? Um, I feel like there's a lot of pressure to do good, but I think it'll be fun and a, a good, yeah. Do you like pressure or do you hate pressure? Like Brian love loves it. living in pressure. Yeah, pressure is good. I love pressure. Does that make you a procrastinator on all the schoolwork? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever seen how slow and weak Brian's jump shot is? Whoa! Yeah. All right. I got a better jump than all of y'all. Caleb, I'm better than you. So, so um, today we had some pretty sad news, right, about Nick leaving. Nick Richards, yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, how do you feel about that? How do you feel about Kentucky next year with our class coming in? I'm not too worried. I think we're going to do really good. One of our best years with Coach Cal. I think we're going to have. Just uh, did you uh, did you see that like basketball season and football season are possibly going to be competing with each other? Yeah, I'm wondering what's going to happen there with college sports. Football, football, football probably will. Yeah, I mean it does. No, but are there any two sport like stars anymore? Not anymore. They've kind of mm -hmm. makes that. Yeah, yeah. Bruce, 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 you can't do it Do you remember yeah. Bruce Ellington from mm -hmm. South Carolina? He he played basketball and football yeah. at the same time. That's pretty cool. That was the most recent one I can think okay. of. I wonder if that's like the downfall of the tight end class. Yeah. <laughs> because tight ends were so good because they had that yeah. basketball training yeah. to box actually, out. Actually, this is a fun fact. Kentucky has a walk-on center who is also a starting pitcher for the um, baseball team. Interesting. So, How fun yeah. was that? <laughs> no, he, fun fact. no, it's a very fun fact. He's not gotten in a single game. Megan, Megan, our behind the scenes producer, is loving that fun fact right now. <laughs> she, uh, she's, she's actually checking it to see if it's yeah, true. Yeah, no, it is true. It it's a big one fact. Look, so, Caleb, what what have you kind of learned from God, if anything, during this quarantine time? Uh, that He has a plan for everything, no matter the circumstances. Uh, it's it could be hard to trust Him, but I think we always should and to know that he has a plan during these times. That's awesome. That's awesome. I love that. Do you think that helps you at all with the move, like kind of reminding yourself of that through this point? Do you think it helps, helps you with your move up to Virginia? Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. 
Okay, one last question before we go. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> ass <that again. laughs> oh, All right, um, don't laugh, there. All right, so again, okay, one last question before we let you go. Uh, what is one area in your life that we can be praying for you right now? In my life? Yeah. Uh. Uh, I'd say just to, just to, all right, you can pray that, like, I'll keep trusting God for, like, everything he has planned for me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's Absolutely. Awesome. And you know those plans are good, as it says in the Bible, so that's, it's got to mm-hmm. trust it. Yeah. So, Brian, why don't you pray for, uh, for yeah. Caleb right now, and uh, we'll let him get ready for school at 2 o'clock. Yeah, I will. All right, uh, dear Lord, thank you for today, and thank you just for the time that we have just to to talk to Caleb and uh, just check in on him and see how he's doing. Uh, and right now, just pray that uh, he would just stay faithful to you just through everything he has going on between the move and school and him staying busy with basketball, that just above all else, he would put you first and uh, stay strong in his faith. And in your name we pray, amen. 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 So guys, real quick, let's just review where we've been. Uh, Last week, we obviously took a little break to talk about Easter, but the week before, we were in Joshua chapter 2. We're going to jump to 3 this week, but Joshua chapter 2. And remember, we saw the story of how Joshua sent out the spies, and the king found out, and he sent his army to find the spies, and they would have been caught except Rahab. Remember, Rahab was the prostitute who was not living according to God's will. She did save the spies. And because of that, God returned the favor and saved her when the walls came tumbling down. And we also saw how God didn't just save her, he redeemed her, and she became Jesus's like great, 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 great grandmother. So great part of Joshua 2. Now we're going to jump into Joshua 3. There's so much in those couple verses that help us remember we need to be following God. And obviously we can't follow an Ark of the Covenant anymore, but we can follow scripture and, and not guessing, hey, what do I think or what do I believe or what should I do or this is what I see, but to actually follow God that's in front of us. Um, and so as you just think about Joshua's command to follow the ark, uh, what jumps out at you or what do you think or what, is, what does that make you feel or what do you think we could learn from that? Oh, well, I think we can learn from it that just, uh, you know, God is always in control and uh, it's up to us to follow it. You know, it's like everyone who got up and followed the Ark of the Covenant, Covenant, you know, they had to obey God and they and Joshua and like the leadership. They had to actually physically follow the covenant. And so just, you know, for us, um, whenever we get, uh, you know, just Christian uh, advice and Christian leadership from, from people that we trust, you know, it's on us to trust what they're saying, you know, that they're, that they care about us and they care about our growth and yeah brian so i think um i think what's important there and through this point in joshua and through genesis even is uh, there's a connection of people following other people mm-hmm. and so i uh, realize that even if you think you're the most trend-setting individual out <laughs> there um you're not that unique. Like you, I'm sure are following the trends of something that came before. And so as they're following the Ark of the Covenant, that's hard for us to imagine right now, but the Ark was simply a vessel for God. And so thinking of that, who are you following and are you following a vessel for God? Um, And, you know, what individual is that kind of an Ark that's leading you to a closer relationship with God? That's very good. And I like that it says, Joshua tells them to follow the ark because you don't know where you're going. Mm-hmm. And it's like, even as we look at COVID-19, the only person that knew what was going to happen was God. Mm-hmm. And God's already well beyond us working out what's going to happen. So if we follow him, we know we're going in the right direction and we know we're going to where we need to go. And and we don't know what tomorrow will bring, but he does. So I love that. Follow it because you don't know where you're going. Yeah. yeah and even that idea of following, um, like even today we were talking in staff about just what do we do as a church post this, right? And um, at the end of some of that conversation, we talked about, you know, just the need to pray, but also uh, for me, it's, it's the, okay, let's get all of our ideas out there. And then just the trust in authority. So the trust in um, Gary to determine the best direction for, um, for this church, the trust in the trustees to guide and direct us, the trust um, in our families and your parents to trust, uh, for you to trust them that that 
although you may be confused or you may feel like there's a bunch of different options trusting your parents that um, their voice, especially if they're scriptural and, um, you know, they're godly, trusting mm-hmm. them to um, to carry things forward. And that's hard sometimes to mm-hmm. trust, but I think it's important. So in Joshua 3, 5, right after he says, follow the, follow the ark, he says, consecrate yourselves, get ready, because God is about to do something special through you. Now, consecrate literally means to dedicate or to set apart. So when you think of that concept of consecrate, we don't use that much anymore. But when you think of consecrating, what, what does it look like for a student? Maybe not during COVID-19, but just in general today, what does it look like for one of our students to consecrate themselves to the Lord? You know, I think it looks like whenever you're at school or on your sports team or in your dance class, you know, whatever activity you're doing. First, how are you doing that to glorify God? Because everything you do should be to glorify God. But then on top of that, you know, are you taking time to pour into other people around you, your peers and your friends and stuff like that, even if they're not responsive to the gospel, it's still on you to keep trying and keep trying and keep sharing the gospel and keep living out that faith, and especially in times like today and, you know, in school today, you look around and just, you know, there's not a really big emphasis on the gospel being shared. So, you know, it's on you as a Christian student to make sure that that the gospel is shared. And so it's on you. It's more of a ownership, I guess, of you to take ownership of your walk <laughs> with the Lord there. Yeah. And I think the idea of, um, as you're saying, you know, focusing on yourself, uh, focusing on your thoughts, on your behaviors and looking, um, looking at that. And there's a point where when I was a student, I would sometimes feel like the aspects of consecrating and what legalism look like are very, very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, so I think it's, it's hard to sometimes differentiate that because really what makes that difference in your heart is really your relationship with God. You know, are you following a system of rules or are you um, truly being motivated by a relationship with God to dedicate yourself to him. Um, and I mean, we don't necessarily do true love weights, um, the way other churches, you know, do it. But I think that that's kind of an aspect of that is I think that that can look very legalistic. Mm -hmm. This idea of abstinence, this idea of, um, saving yourself is, um, is biblical, it's scriptural, but I think that it can look really legalistic and churchy. Um, or if you realize that, um, that it's not about that. It's about your relationship with God and your relationship with somebody in the future. And, um, and even, you know, what are you doing to dedicate yourselves both to God in that process, but also to your future spouse and not bringing baggage into relationships mm-hmm. in the future. That's very good. That's very true. So the second part of three, five, it says that consecrate yourselves for God will do something tomorrow. And I love that. It's not get ready because God's about to do it. It's go ahead and consecrate yourself because God will do it. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I think in our own lives, that's especially like right now with COVID-19 is we don't know what tomorrow looks like, but we do trust God will do something tomorrow. And we've got to be ready today for what he's going to do tomorrow. So as you think about just stepping out on faith, knowing God's going to show up and do something mighty and awesome, can you think of a time in your own life where you really had to trust God today for what he was going to do tomorrow? So I have really two examples that kind of stand out to me uh, in my own life. The first would be uh, going into sixth grade, so new school, um, new set of friends, everything like that. That was just one of the most nerve-wracking times of my life. And even though I was like young and didn't really know a whole lot and stuff, you know, I was still I still had to to be dependent upon God. Um, and just uh, that He was going to take care of me at a new school in a new environment. And, uh, you know, just now looking back, seeing those three years of my life was some of the best years of my life. You know, I had so many great teachers who poured into me and a lot of great friends, and it was just really fun times for me. And then another time would actually be right now, but it wouldn't be, it's not because of COVID-19, but it's more of, you know, like I'm a senior in college now, my last few classes, I'm wrapping up my education. And so it's kind of figuring out what my next steps are because I've always been kind of a, the type of person that just goes like day by day, you know, like I don't really plan too far ahead, but um, you know, like now I'm starting to have to plan a little bit ahead and, you know, kind of see, you know, where God 
may want to use me, you know, in August or even like in the next few months, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So that's been, uh, it's been like a really, um, you know, it's been really neat to kind of see God working some of that stuff out for me. You may be the first person I've ever heard say that their middle school sixth grade year was one of the best years of their life. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, really it's rare, it's rare, but no, it was, it was really, it was really awesome. Especially after, I don't know if it was on one of these or a sermon recently, you started talking about getting beat up at, uh, in your middle school <laughs> no. on your birthday. <laughs> no, yes, no, so, so, so that was actually my sixth grade year, but, but what made it, a great year. no, no, no. So what made that year so great though, is I'm actually going through a Bible study study right now with my sixth and eighth grade math teacher, uh, Eric Ruoff. And so just uh, in that moment, I didn't realize he was discipling me because I didn't even know what that meant. But now I like look back and see the role that he played in my life and the fact that I'm still keeping up with my sixth grade math teacher, you know, and like he would uh, go to the gym with me after school and we'd shoot baskets and he'd come to my rec games and stuff like stuff that teachers just don't do. And so it was really cool. Like he he really helped shape those years for me. So. That's cool. Yeah, and I think that's a call out for any small group leader um, or just parent on this call of the impact that those little acts really do have. And yeah. so um, that concept, do for one what you wish you could do for all, because right. I'm sure in sixth grade he's not doing that with all 90 of his yeah. kids. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, for any adult or small group leader out there listening to this, focusing on, hey, what can I do that can make this much of a deep impact? Right. And in that way, we do help consecrate today Mm -hmm. what's going to happen tomorrow. And if we're not pouring into the, you know, we complain, where's the leaders of the church coming? Well, Mm -hmm. are we pouring into them to help raise them up? And that's a really good point. So what about you? Has there been a time where you had to kind of get ready today for what God was going to do tomorrow, even though you had no idea what he was going to do? Um, I mean, I think even in the midst of COVID, there's a point of this because I got hooked into sound systems and tech when I was in 10th grade and I was running the sound for a student band. And so, um, you know, now it's digital. I mean, I learned it on analog and would run wires up through the, you know, roof of, um, of our student room and stuff like that. But, um, but I think that's even an example of, Hey, these are skills I learned, you know, now 15, 16 years ago, um, that, all of a sudden, you know, I would have said, oh, virus will happen when you're 30 and 31 and you jump on fixing things inside of a church or (laughs) sound tech. But, you know, it's those type of things um, that that I think God works through like those little things. Um, And and this isn't spiritual, but I think that it doesn't God doesn't always just work on the spiritual. I think it's, you know, also you as a person holistic, but even you know, once we get off here, I'm going to install a washer. And it's, you know, I only know how to do that because we were broke and poor and had no jobs and a thousand bucks in Texas um, going to seminary. And we were like five months married. And um, so I took any job I could get. I was washing trucks with acid and then um, applied everywhere. And Lowe's Home Improvement ended up hiring me. And then I learned how to do little things. And so... Um, so I know how to install washers and dryers and appliances. It's not hard. It's just the know-how of knowing how to do that. So um, it's a long story to just say, like, I think, you know, if students can realize that they're being prepared now for their future in every little bit of that, right. whether it's bagging groceries in a grocery store, learning how to do whatever little jobs that they have, um, trying to figure out how how could um, it's stuff that I do at Douglas Anderson, like film or music or anything like that. What could that do to impact my future life? And maybe I'm not going to be, you know, Quentin Tarantino. Like maybe I'm not going to be the best singer out there. Maybe I will, but maybe I'm not. And so how could those skills still be used and focusing and saying, look, I am going to hold my future open because in my head, I may be Kobe Bryant, right? <laughs> But that may not be God's plan for me. And so still act and train as if you're going to, but realize you need to hold it loosely to allow God to work in your life. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And I think a great lesson is that God doesn't waste anything. That's Mm -hmm. why I heard with both of you. Even the the beatings you took in sixth grade (laughs) and the beatings I give him Monday on the basketball court. Whoa, no. That is not happening. (laughs) But (laughs) the the, the problems in sixth grade is the the job at Lowe's. Mm -hmm. God uses. So even the things you're going through now, God will use in a mighty way. 
So one of the things I love about the story of Joshua 3 is they come to the River Jordan. It's flooding. It's what stands between them and the promised land. And what I think we sometimes miss is the difference in the way God stops the Red Sea or excuse me, the difference in the way God stops the Jordan and he parts the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. There's a difference there. Moses literally holds his staff and the Bible says a mighty wind blew and it divided and it was an immediate thing. In Joshua 3, we see that the leaders, the Levites holding the ark, touched the foot mm -hmm. and several miles up the stream in Adam, it stops there. So it's going to take a little while to slow down, but yet they're still walking out, trusting God. And I love that. Um, that God's now it's like Moses, I needed to show you a mighty work. Now I'm training you and teaching you. So when you think about the differences in the way that was the Red Sea was parted and the Jordan was stopped, what what stands out to you or what what really resonates with you in that? I think it's that God will speak to us all in different ways. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's still on us to accept the the action and you know like we still have to be faithful to you know whatever god is calling us to do but the fact that nevertheless god still spoke to moses and to joshua both and they were both ready to listen and to act on faith and so you know for us as or for you as students you know how are you listening to god you know like are you in tune with what god is doing in your life and are you ready to act on faith you know to whatever it is god is calling you to do i think that's really important yeah, and I think it's the humility of realizing that just because God moved in somebody else's life in a particular way, um, you need to remain humble and realize it's probably not going to happen that exact way. Yeah. Like, what was Joshua thinking when he starts stepping out on this um, and all of a sudden the waters don't part like what happened with Moses and what he was told? You know what I mean? And so why, why did that happen? Um, and so just looking at it, it's like, you know, was Joshua fearful? Did Joshua question himself? Um, or was he confident in realizing that, look, God may have done that with Moses's life, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm wrong because it's not happening that same way in my life. Um, it's just doing something different right. and trusting that God can do different things. Um, because when we're actually not trusting God about that, in a way we're becoming God and we're saying, no, God, mm -hmm. you must act the way that yeah. I feel like you should act. And that's a really dangerous place to right. be. Right. And just because God gives this person an experience, it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. experience was for you or your experience is any less valid. It's mm -hmm. just the way God speaks to us. And so with that, I love the fact, I just love the image of the first Levite stepping out mm -hmm. with the ark. And it says it, it stopped a couple miles downstream and he would have been walking out and it would not have, he wouldn't have felt the immediate effect. So he's walking, walking. I just can't imagine his head and go, okay, Joshua, you told me to step out of here. The water's not stopping. And so just this image of him walking out in faith, trusting God is going to do what God said. As you think about that, what, what can our students learn from well, the whole thing, but especially that Levite, that first dude out. I think that sometimes, you know, uh, what what we're expecting, you know, is not going to happen right away. You know, if God is doing, you know, like a work in our life, you know, we may not be able to see that right away. It may take some time for us to see, you know, exactly what God is is doing. So, you know, if you're going through a tough time or if, you know, things aren't going according to your plan or how, you know, like you feel like they are whatever, you know, you have to stay faithful and um, stay true to, to knowing who God is and that, you know, um, he's still with you. So I think just an example of that is, you know, thinking back to like whenever my grand, uh, my grandfather passed away and it was like one of the hardest times of my life, you know, I was like, all right, God, you know, like, what are you trying to do here? And like, um, you know, like what's going on, like, why did you do that or whatever? And then just kind of seeing, you know, the months and months that followed that, you know, just of how much, you know, closer we got as a family and, you know, just, um, it was a lot of pain that like we went through, but then, you know, seeing of how, um, you know, the whole time, you know, fast forwarding, you know, my grandma then got like a, got placed into like a nursing home, you know, where she got better care than she was whenever my grandfather was still alive. And so, in that sense, you know, it was kind of, um, you know, like now my grandmother is like in a better place, you know, she's getting taken care of mm -hmm. more and stuff like that. And so I think that was just kind of neat to see, uh, see it come full circle. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes I wonder, what did the people on the shore think mm -hmm. as the Levites going into the water, you know, and, 
And uh, Israel up to this point didn't really have a great track record of what the people on the shore probably thought or did. I mean, these were the same people when Moses is up on a mountain. They say, this ain't working. Let's make a calf. So, um, so, you know, who on the shore was criticizing what was going on because it wasn't working. And, uh, and I think that's a message for students. I feel like um, the older they get, the more that you're sometimes willing to let things go for a little bit. Um, I think the younger you are, the more that you expect and demand immediate results, um, because you just haven't lived through enough life experience to see that sometimes the results aren't immediate. Um, and so, uh, I think that it's definitely a frustration that students have in church overall is an, um, unwillingness to let things go, um, or to trust that God's still working. Um, I think it's the reason why many student groups run away and start their own churches. I think it's the reason why even student pastors run away and start their own churches is because they haven't learned that sometimes you just need to let the process work. Right. Let the water gradually go down. Um, trust that God is actually working here and don't stand on the shores causing dissent. Like just stand in expectation that God is going to work and it's really cool what happens. Otherwise you end up looking like the people where I'm sure that there are people on the shore bashing it right. and then it happens and then you just look like a fool <laughs> and that hurts your leadership in the future mm -hmm. because when you look like a fool one time, then the next time people are going to say, well, actually I trust you. You look like a fool. Right. So, um, so I think that that's a message for students, mm -hmm. you know, just be careful the expectations that you put on yourself that you put on God and that you even put on the church um, when things are supposed to be moving for God. All right. No, that's a great point. So Joshua three, we see a lot of getting ready today for what's going to happen tomorrow or being patient um, in whatever's happening because you know, God's going to do something on the other side of it. And what a timely message as we go through COVID-19. So guys, any other thoughts or things you want to just throw out before we go? Yeah, so I love uh, just the encouragement that God has for Joshua. It's specifically in verses 7 and 8, just at the end of verse 7, um, just where uh, God tells Joshua that he'll, that God says, I will be with you. So just to know that, um, you know, like through, you know, tough times and just not really sure you know like what's going to go on from joshua's standpoint just the fact that god is still um still there with joshua and the same is true for us for everyone you know, god's always with us i think mm -hmm. that's really encouraging i think uh for just you know for students at home realize hey this is um you know we're now probably over or at the hump mm -hmm. of this whole thing and so realizing that it doesn't mean we're going to rush back to normal um but now with where we are, it does mean that we should start seeing something more normal. And so um, just, um, you know, there's, there's a point to where all of us need to be commended of just saying, look, you've made it this far. Right. <laughs> and then looking ahead and saying, look, it may be a slow water recede for the next mm -hmm. month, two months, who knows how long. Um, you know, this may carry on for another year and a half. But trust that probably the worst of this is now behind us. And, uh, and that, you know, let's hope and pray for, uh, for what does that recovery truly look like? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So guys, we're going to wrap it up. We really appreciate you coming out this week, wherever you are being with us. We know it's not the same, but we hope it at least helps you staying on that right path, uh, in your discipleship journey. And we look forward to when that water does recede and we can all come back together at the church. But until then, we'll be praying for you. If you need us at all, we can do anything for you. Please let us know. But if not, God bless. We'll see you soon.